brothers and sisters, on this Labor Day 2023, we have some breaking news. All Elite Wrestling, they have fired CM Punk. And this is on the heels of our last conversation in which I outlined exactly why CM Punk absolutely is creating a hostile work environment as reported in AEW. Well, much to the wrestling world's surprise, Tony Khan has gone on record and admitted everything that I said, everything that I outlined last episode, Tony Khan has admitted that it is all true and he's taken it a step further. For years, I have asked Tony Khan, is AEW a safe work environment? And for years, he has avoided answering that question until now. Tony Khan has put out a written statement. Tony Khan has done a personal conversation with folks at a live event. Tony Khan at a scrum. He has admitted AEW not only was an unsafe environment, but in fact, there was an individual in particular who put lives at risk including Tony Khan's lives. That individual is CM Punk. And it's for that reason Punk has been fired. And Phil Brooks, the man who portrays the character CM Punk, he has been fired as well. In this episode, you are going to find out what I mean by that. The guy got fired twice. Can you imagine that? The pride of New England, Danny G, joins me as we break this down. Let's get it on. Locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Welcome back to the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, the show about pro wrestling. And everything else. And let me tell you something, folks. It is incredible. Okay. You would think I am Duke Stradamus by the way that everything has gone down. I told you, I told you that it was ridiculous. You got a guy going around challenging people to fights, fighting executives, fighting his peers, sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. How could you operate any work environment with that kind of shenanigans going on? It's unsafe. It's unprofessional. It is a walking lawsuit waiting to happen. And Tony Khan himself finally had to find the fortitude to do something about it. Before I get to our guest here, let me read the statement from All Elite Wrestling. For anyone who is unclear on what's going on, this is not pretend. (laughs) This isn't kayfabe. This is 100% legit, folks. Check this out. Statement from All Elite Wrestling and Tony Khan. AEW has terminated the wrestler and employment agreements between Philip Brooks, a.k.a. CM Punk, and AEW with cause effective immediately. The termination was confirmed today by Tony Khan, CEO, general manager, and head of creative of AEW. The termination follows a week-long internal investigation of an incident that occurred backstage at AEW All in London on Sunday, August 27th. Following the investigation, the AEW Discipline Committee met and later convened with outside legal counsel before making a unanimous recommendation to Khan that CM Punk be terminated with cause. Khan offered the following statement, and I quote, Phil played an important role within AEW, and I thank him for his contributions. The termination of his AEW contracts with cause is ultimately my decision and mine alone. Of course, I wish I didn't have to share this news, which may come as a disappointment to many of our fans. Nonetheless, I am making the decision in the best interest of many amazing people who make AEW possible every week. Our talent, staff, venue operators, and many others whose efforts are unsung but essential to bringing our fans great shows on television 
and at arenas and stadiums throughout the world. End quote. The pride of New England, Danny G. I just read that statement off to you from Tony Khan, from AEW. Philip Brooks has been fired. CM Punk has been fired. What are your initial thoughts, Danny G? What a disaster. Is probably the best way I can put it for you, my friend. What an absolute dumpster fire this all turned out to be over the course of the past two years. Would you agree with that? 100%. And, and listen, I didn't know that Phil Brooks was an employee of AEW. So not only was he working under a wrestler contract under the CM Punk uh, uh, character, but he also, Phil Brooks himself, the man, also was under an employee contract. Did you know this, Danny? Uh, no, no, I, I didn't know. I actually, that's not, you, you actually just taught me something. I didn't realize that there was, I mean, I know there's, you know, like Stephanie McMahon always had her, you know, internal contract with WWE as an executive. And then she had her on screen character contract as Stephanie McMahon. I didn't realize that that would be the same thing with uh, wrestlers themselves as well. So I'm guessing that the elite must have contracts as Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, and then Matt and Nick Jackson as executives. Does that make sense? Is that yeah, that's a, that's a fact because they are they've been named, they've been identified as executives, which means that you're an employee of okay. the business. So we know that, that that's a fact. Uh, we know in the past that AEW has alluded to offering health insurance to wrestlers, and really the only way that you could do that would be to make them employees. I'm not, not the only way, but the most sensible way to do it is just make them employees. So it seems with with some of the upper echelon folks, including Jericho, uh, now that we know, including Punk, I'm sure including uh, Brian Danielson, these are folks who are not executives technically, but they are folks who are wrestlers. And putting them under employee contracts is definitely an easy way to get them health insurance. So that's, a, that's an interesting... Um, little tidbit there. I, I wonder about something though, Danny, because you are a person who has worked for most of your life, obviously, right? I mean, what, we'd say you've been in the workforce for at least 30 years at this point, right? Well, I started delivering papers when I was 12 years old. So yes, I'm going to say I've been in the workforce for quite a while. For quite a while. So you're a guy who has worked in various industry. You've had various positions, you know, from the kid delivering newspapers to being a manager to to whatever you you've done it all so to speak when it comes to more corporate focused companies danny have you ever gone through human resources training where you have to either watch videos or fill out a questionnaire but you at the end you have to sign that says that you understand the rules and regulations of the workplace and you agree that you will follow the rules and regulations of the workplace. And if you don't, you could be fired. Are you familiar with that type of HR training? Uh, considering I've worked for uh, th at least three multi-billion dollar corporations, yes, of co yes, absolutely, hundred percent. You know, you cannot you cannot start your employment until you basically agree to their terms of. I guess as a safe workplace, or you basically agree to their terms, not necessarily of employment, but terms and conditions of how they want to conduct and run their business from person to person. There you go. So, so this is important. And, and for all of you out there who are listening, I'm getting somewhere with this, as you can imagine, because I know that there's some of these uh, flavored malt beverage, they, the skinny jeans sagging, need to pull up their skinny jeans. These folks who are not top shelf, they're probably scratching their head. Why the hell is Duke talking about HR training and what have you? Well, <laughs> When you are an independent contractor, the terms under your style of employment, and I'm going to use the word employment, but you're technically under a contract. So, you know, the, the, depending on where you are, the, the word to use to describe a contractor is, is interchangeable. You can't, you, you can't call them an employee, though. That's what's, what's important. They're their own classification. But when you are a contractor, your terms are not the same terms as someone who is an actual employee. When you are an employee, you are required to go through human resources training. 
and that includes sexual harassment and 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 workplace uh the way to conduct yourself in a workplace you you agree that you're not going to discriminate against anybody based on sex religion etc uh you're not going to steal <laughs> you know that this hr training outlines the rules and regulations for the workplace why does that matter to this situation well cm punk or as as the 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 real person phil brooks he cannot legally say he didn't know or he never agreed that he wouldn't go around in the workplace beating people up. Can't say that. You went through the HR training, buddy. We got your name, your signature. We got it dated. You can't say you didn't know. You can't walk around challenging everybody to a fight, a real fight, not a wrestling fight, a real fight. You can't say you didn't know. You can't threaten the person who's the president of the company and the baby boy of the owner of the company. You can't say you didn't know <laughs> that you could be fired for putting his life in danger. You can't say you didn't know. Philip, much like Danny G just said, worked for multi-billion dollar companies. You sign off on the HR paperwork. You literally make it clear that you are going to follow the rules of the company. So my question to you, Danny G, based on the information that's been gathered and that's been put out, including by Tony Khan himself, who says literally Punk put his life in danger, would you have terminated not only CM Punk the wrestler, but Philip Brooks the, the employee? Would you have terminated both of those contracts, Danny? And if so, why? If, if not, why not? I, I would have terminated the contract of both CM Punk and Phil Brooks. And I'll add to that, he's not the only one I would have terminated. I would have, if I was the owner of AEW Wrestling, I would have cleaned house and I would have also terminated the elite, Hangman Page, Jack Perry, and I would have wanted to start fresh because I think I would have sent a message to the rest of the locker room. I'm not putting up with this crap anymore. We're running a business here. Okay. Yes, I'm a fan. Yes, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Yes, I have a lot of money and I can fund this conglomerate. But at the same time, this isn't playtime anymore. It's been four years. We're trying to get a new billion dollar contract for our jobs to be able to continue to do them every week so that we can put on a show for people every week and we can continue to grow our business. And all of you have stood in the way of us having to grow the business, of our, or I'm sorry, for us being able to grow the business. Because all of you have been selfish. You've put your own needs first. You've put what you wanted to do first. And you haven't acted with the best interest of the company that I have funded and helped you all find. So honestly, I would have terminated them all. So, so this is an interesting case here, and, and I'm glad that you brought it up because let, let's dig into this a little bit, Danny, because I, I am curious about the, the thought process going a step further here because you know, I, I've, I've been a manager in various industry. I've trained managers, recruited, uh, hired, trained, and promoted managers. It's, it's something that is part of my, my toolbox, so to speak, here. So I'm very curious. When it comes to Jack Perry, let's start with him. We haven't heard of him having multiple uh, situations where he's gotten into physical altercations with anybody, like Punk. Um, in fact, I think it's pretty clear that Perry never initiated physical confrontation with Punk. So what specifically would you fire Perry for? Because it's, you know, you also got to keep in mind if Perry is an employee, mind you. Now, he's an independent contractor and he's not an employee then it's a lot easier to pull the plug on him. But if he's an employee, don't you got to give him a, a verbal warning, a written warning, a final warning, and then you get rid of him? What would you be firing him for? You would have to look into this to find out if Florida, because that's, that's where I'm assuming where the corporate office of AEW is. If Florida is an at-will employment state, and he is a, con well, again, it gets to your whole point. If he's an independent contract, you could just cut the ties right off the bat. If he is an employee of AEW and Florida is an at-will employment state like Massachusetts is where I've worked most of my career, 
then you can terminate him at any point in any time because he signed off on that, whether it's right or wrong. Now, it's not as easy as it sounds, and I'm sure you know, most corporations will do it the right way and don't do it that way. They'll at least you know, give you a, written, a verbal warning, then a written warning, then a final warning, and then they'll go from there. But they don't have to do that. They can terminate you at any point. And yes, we have not heard of any other instances where he got in, started trouble or anything like that. And he very well might not have. But at the same time, he did instigate. And yeah, it's just instigating. And honestly, Punk should have just been the better person and laughed at him when he walked back and said, nice try, buddy. You know, but they are all children. Like CM Punk said, they're not just, um, you know, he, he, he said at that presser, well, I'm dealing with children. Well, guess what, buddy? You're part of the daycare too because you're acting just like them. And you could have very easily just moved away from that and not worried about any of it or all that. But you, you kept going and you caused a huge issue on the biggest day of the company. So maybe Perry wouldn't be able to be fired. Maybe he gets away with this suspension, you know, I, whatnot. But if I had my way, I'd have gotten rid of him too. He don't draw a dime for the company anyway, so what does it matter? I, again, it's it's an interesting take here because you know there are first first and foremost, you're absolutely right. Florida is an at will uh, state, which means that your employer can fire you for any reason. <laughs> they don't necessarily need cause. I mean, you could try to take it on a federal discrimination case in some way, somehow, if you if you qualify for any classification. In Perry's case, I don't think he would. He could try a wrongful termination, but they're at will. So he'd have a tough time doing that if he's an, an employee, in fact. Um, so interesting interesting take there, Danny. I didn't think about that, but that's that's pretty solid. I don't believe that Perry, quote unquote, instigated. And the reason why I say that is because, first and foremost, the spot that he wanted to do with the real glass that was a conversation between him and management. Oh, absolutely. Ulti- yeah. U- ultimately, management ag- uh, approved it. It was. It, it was definitely cleared. It was definitely so, cleared. So, for Punk to insert himself into that and then to turn it into a fight, it's it's pretty ridiculous because Perry had nothing to do with Punk, and Perry wasn't trying to include Punk in anything. He was minding his own business, basically. Now, knocking on the glass and saying, "Look, real glass, cry about it." Perry's also doing that within the confines of his character as a wrestler. He's a heel. He's trying to get heat. And since the dirt sheets and everybody is talking about this thing that leaked out, Perry's just trying to take advantage of the buzz. So because of that, I think you'd have a tough time even suspending the guy, at least suspending him without pay, because what did he do that was against the rules? Now, if you're saying his job performance in general is not satisfactory, we just need to get rid of him. That, that's a whole separate conversation. But in terms of this issue in particular, it doesn't really seem like he broke any human resources rules or, or any rules in general that would warrant him to lose his job. That would warrant anything than a conversation, really. Well, here's the thing. No, he didn't. And I agree with you. I mean, that could have been taken in a, in a multiple ways. You don't, I mean, unless you really pay attention to the dirt sheets, I, and, and most people, I don't know, don't, except for crazy people like me. But he, um, most people probably didn't even know what he meant, to be honest with you. And truthfully, he didn't do anything wrong. You're right. He was acting within the confines of his character. He was trying to get some heel heat. He's trying to get himself you know, over. That's fine. But what... What happened was, unfortunately, and it's, this is not his fault, the whole locker room is just a ticking time bomb. And clearly, CM Punk was a ticking time bomb. So he saw that, and he immediately took it personally, and he took it as himself, and he took it as Phil Brooks, that you were taking the shot at me as a person, at feedback that I've given you, whatever. And that caused a stupid altercation backstage, which again, Punk started that altercation. Clearly he definitely decided to get physical with, with, with Jack Perry and he shouldn't have done that. 
He should have laughed it off, being the bigger star, being the more seasoned employee, and just smiled at him, winked at him, let him go by and say, I'm going to go out and rock this show now. Okay? But he didn't do that. So you're right. It would be tough, tough to get rid of Jack Perry. But like I said, in this case, I think you can't, you can't fire a couple people involved in the situation and not fire them all is the way I look at it. Because I think that brings up a whole other ball of wax. Because I, I think about maybe back when I was running the restaurant industry, when I was working, being a general manager for a restaurant. And I've talked to you off, offline about this so many times about how being in the restaurant industry taught me a lot. One of the things it did t- teach me was I never want to own my own restaurant because everybody and their mother thinks that because they like to cook at home that they can run a restaurant. Oh, I would love to open my own restaurant because they have no idea in the amount of work that's actually involved with running your own restaurant in your business. It's a lot more than just putting together a menu of a few things you like to cook and putting it out there for people. There's a lot more involved in that. Running a wrestling company is the same way. But getting back to my point, occasionally, and this probably happened a couple of times, the restaurant industry is well known for its partying, especially after hours. And I had a situation personally where after hours one night, one of my managers was partying with a couple of the other employees, and they all got into some trouble. So technically, who do I hold responsible for that? Do I hold the manager responsible? Yes, because he was the one who was technically in charge and allowed this to happen. But by doing that, I, would, I ran the risk of favoritism. So of course, I had to turn this all over to HR. They made the ultimate decision not to fire any of them, to discipline them all the same way. So I personally wanted them all gone, it just because I didn't feel like dealing with the headache anymore. And I felt that they put my personal livelihood at risk. So I think this whole situation, if you look at it all, I think Punk, I think Hangman, I think Omega, I think the Bucks, I think Perry, I think they put the entire company's well-being at risk by acting the way they have over the past few years. And if I was, again, if I was the president, CEO of the company, lead booker or whatever, I would be saying to myself at this point, it's been four years, enough is enough, I've had this crap, I think I have some decent people around me now that I can move forward with. So you know what, guys? We're starting over, we don't need you, goodbye. That's how I would handle the situation, Duke. Very well said and and, and an interesting take there, Danny. I appreciate it. I I knew we were going to have this conversation, but... We are touching upon something that you know most will not because they just don't have the experience. Yeah. You know, most people don't consider what's beyond them personally. Let me and let me just not sorry to interrupt you, Duke, but let me just uh, say this one again. We talked about the whole at will employment and stuff thing, which you know this these ultimately these are all employees in some way, shape, or form that we're talking about right now. This isn't 1960 where at will employment is bing bang boom. You know, you can't do you, you really can't. You really just can't fire someone anymore without severe cause. You know, like you would really have to be you have to really do something drastic like in other words show up to work intoxicated. Um at least for I, I'm speaking from a very corporate level here. So like for instance with my company, if someone showed up to work intoxicated, you know what? Could they fire them? Yes, but they won't. They'll try to seek to get them help first, you know, because at will employment, it's just not as easy as it was in this litigated society that we live in. You have to be careful. So I'm talking, you know, hypothetically how I would like to handle this situation. Um, I don't know if Tony Khan could have handled the situation this way. I'm just speaking from the point of I think this is what he needs to make his business better. And that's fair. I mean, you, you're you're speaking on a more macro level when we started micro about just this incident. But you're you're also taking everything into consideration, the, the whole history of the company and where it's at, where it's been and, and, and some of the uh, starts and stops that they keep running into and why. And ultimately, it comes down to the personnel, but really it comes down to the management. Tony Khan has proven that he is not a good manager of people. He's just not. 
He may be a good manager of analytics and numbers, and that's certainly what his claim to fame has always been before pro wrestling. You know, Tony is a whiz at analytics. He's the analytics guy, and he's been using it in in football, and everyone loves it, and all kinds of other nonsense. Oh, yeah, because the Jaguars are on the level of competing year after year. So it definitely works there. Well, and that's well, but see now here's here's the caveat to that. I'm going to challenge you on that because you're absolutely right. The Jaguars are uh, an abysmal football team. They've had, I think, last year is probably one of their better years in a long time. Yeah. But overall, they've been abysmal. But the Khan family have already made their money back. Whatever they paid for the Jaguars, they've already made their money back, and they're and the Jaguars are overall profitable, not because of the football team but because of the combination of tax breaks and also all the other entertainment things that happen at those Jacksonville Jaguar uh, venues. So in that sense, strictly from a business standpoint, the cons have proven that they know how to make a buck, including at times when people are looking and it doesn't really seem like anything positive is happening. In reality, they're finding creative ways to make a buck. So I'm going to, I'm going to tip my hat to big Papa uh, Shad Khan, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to give Tony credit for that. I'm going to, I'm going to give it to the, to the, the father, because I think he's the real businessman and Tony is just his son who's trying, but really not doing too well. Um, this situation could have been avoided. And when I do management training, when I go into a space and, and I've done it in various industry, one of the things that I hammer home is culture. What is the culture in this workplace? Where is it at today? And if it's not where you need it to be, in, and certainly it's not where you need it to be if you got to bring a, a person like me in, then what are some of the steps we can take in order to change the culture and, and improve upon the culture in the place? AEW somehow, some way, have devolved into a culture of bullying. And it hasn't been any more evident than CM Punk walking up to people and challenging them to step outside. I mean, Danny, in your lifetime, what line of work have you ever had where not even a manager, but literally a guy who works just like you is walking around demanding that people fight him if they don't want to listen to what he has to say when he doesn't even have the stripes to tell anybody anything to do? Have you ever seen anything so ridiculous, Danny? Uh, absolutely not. A- absolutely not. But y- y- your your point, I know, I know what you're what you were saying is basically what you're what, what you're leading to is you know leadership starts at the top. It, it it always does. And I'll speak a little bit to that. Where when I was in the restaurant food service industry, uh, I was always one of the top managers that people wanted to work for because I fostered an environment of inclusion and I fostered an environment where everybody wanted to come to work because I did everything I could to make a crappy job as fun or as, you know, enjoyable as possible while you're in the building. You know what I mean? So, and I think to an extent, that's what Tony Khan tries, has tried to do. Um, It didn't bite me the way it has bitten him. What he has done is he's tried to foster where an environment, or he has fostered an environment where he's everybody's buddy. He's everybody's buddy, and he's gonna, you know, you know, he may not be partying with you, but he's gonna provide the stuff for the party. He he he's just been everybody's pal. He's been everybody's buddy. Everybody's had a voice. Everybody's listened to or whatever. But what that does is it is it incorporates people eventually starting to take advantage. Especially when you're dealing with adults. I know it sounds crazy, but everyone that's in that company is an adult. You know, in their in their late twenties, early thirties, early forties, whatever. They're all adults. So they get smart and they can see when they have an opportunity and they're and they're taking advantage of that. So w- getting to CM Punk with all this, there's a lot we can say about CM Punk, Phil Brooks, whatever. One thing we can't say is that he's dumb because he's not. He's a very, very smart guy. He saw this within 10 days he started working there. He saw what an absolute schmuck Tony Khan was. 
And he saw that an opportunity that he was going to be able to take advantage of. And that's what he's done all along. He has popularity. He has a following, which is probably bigger than anything that that company has ever had overall. I mean, I know there's been big, big names that have been brought in and history has shown it hasn't helped. But CM Punk has a following. You know, you do hear CM Punk chants at WWE events still. So he has a following. He's used that as a way to always get what he wants. And I do think that in some sense, he was trying to do some good things with that. I do think that he has gone to Tony at times and said, this isn't how we're going to do it, my friend. We have to do it this way. We have to do, you know, this is how, and, and not necessarily to say this is how it was done in WWE, but that's probably in in hearsay what he was saying. Like this is how success was done before, where I've worked before. I think we need to bring some of that into here. And I think that was met with resistance from other people, other executives within the company since day one. And I think it has been, it has caused nothing but an environment where eventually leads to bullying, where people like Punk, who may think he's been empowered by somebody when he really hasn't, can just do things that, that, that he wants to do and say. People like Britt Baker. Who like oh what, what's going to happen to me? You know what I mean. The boss has already told me that I'm invaluable. He's already signed me to a big contract. What, what what's going to happen? So I don't care. I'll bully Thunder Rosa. I'll make her feel like crap all the time. I'll make her scared to come to work every day. You know, and I'm sure there's more of that that goes on because the environment that Tony Khan has fostered is not friendly. It's not even professional. It's basically you come to work and you go home. I'm sorry, you come to work. You party, we party afterwards, and then we go home. But I don't even think that happens. I think what happens is they come to work, nobody cares. Okay, I don't have anything for you tonight, so they let you leave for the night. WWE doesn't do that. Okay? Even if they don't have you on the show, if they don't have you on the card, you're in the building. Why? Because you can watch, you can study, you can see what's going on, you can try to make yourself better. There's none of that that's going on. This is. This is my job once a week over there. I'm going to wrestle once a week. I'm going to go to a Comic Con on the weekends. I'm going to sign autographs. I'm going to go to a convention. The environment Tony has fostered is unprofessional and it hasn't worked. And that's the truth. You know, Tony put out a, a, a another statement, a follow up statement, in which he said, and I quote, Never in all my time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. I don't think anybody should feel that way at work. I don't feel the people I work with should feel that way. And I had to make a very difficult choice today. Danny, here we go again with just poor word choice on Tony Khan's part. The way that I read that, and I want to get your take on this, I read that statement as... I didn't take Punk serious as a security risk, as a risk to the safety of others, until he threatened me. Until me, Tony Khan, was put in danger, I didn't feel Punk was a dangerous person. Despite the fact that he had already thrown hands with my three EVPs, despite the fact that he's kicking other employees out of the building like Chris Daniels, that he's kicking other contracts out of the contractors out of the building, like uh, Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler's brother, the other Nemeth kid. Despite the fact that Punk had gotten into to uh, Jack Perry's face and berated him and challenged him to a fight, that got broken up. And then and then finally <laughs> he actually puts hands on Perry and chokes him and punches him and does all kinds of nonsense, according to reports. Tony Khan did not take Punk serious as a security and and a a life-threatening individual until Tony Khan was put in a position by Punk, according to Tony Khan. What is your take on that, Danny, the fact that he didn't take it seriously until it happened to him? Because a, a person like Tony Khan, who's used to getting everything he wants in life and probably getting protected in many different ways, 
he's right. He probably hasn't ever been in a situation like that where he felt like his life was threatened. He, he probably hasn't, and he probably didn't know what to do, even if you hear it from other people. But when it comes to you, it's always a different story. You know, one of the things I used to deal with in the restaurants all the time was, blah, 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 how come, how come so-and-so gets this, but I don't get that? And I would always come back and say to them, okay, yeah, so-and-so gets a little bit of a break here because he has, I don't know, maybe 15, you know, complimentary emails over the past, over the past month that have been good for him. So maybe he gets a little break with this and that. But you know what you get a break on? Didn't you come in late last week and I didn't say a word to you? So situations like that, you know, people never know what to do until it actually affects them. And we don't know how it happened or when it happened or whatever, but let's just, you know, punk had Tony shit in his pants is what it basically is what it basically sounds like. And I know he comes out and he says, I have to make, I had to make this decision. Um, but you know, but he puts together this disciplinary committee or whatever, you know, whatever. I mean, and I'm just going to compare this to one situation, Duke, and you'll appreciate this. You think Vince McMahon needed a disciplinary committee when he wanted to fire the Ultimate Warrior on the spot after SummerSlam? Or in fact, when he did fire the Ultimate Warrior on the spot, when the Warrior refused to go out unless he paid him a quarter of a million dollars? That just goes to show you what the type of businessman Tony Khan is. He doesn't know how to make decisions. He doesn't know how to do things that are best for business. He always has to have somebody else involved. He should have on that night said, get out of the building. Don't ever come back to me again. You are fired. I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. Go home. You've done your thing. Scram. Get out of my company now. But he can't do that. He can't do that because he doesn't have the balls to do something like that. You're absolutely right. And, and you're right. I mean, Vince would never, I mean, first of all, Vince McMahon has been into countless confrontations with uh, wrestlers. I mean, he's, he's known for it. That doesn't make it right. I, I certainly don't condone workplace violence, violence in general, unless we're defending ourselves because our lives or the lives of our loved ones or whoever you are, are in danger. I just don't believe that you go around initiating violence against anyone. Um, it's not good for business. It's not acceptable. And quite frankly, in the real world, and, and this is what I'll say to all of you out there who've been cheering this kind of nonsense on, it's very easy to sit there and claim that Tony Khan shouldn't fire somebody who's going around beating up <laughs> his peers. It's very easy to claim, hey, that's just their wrestlers. That's just the way it is. And yeah, he's just he, he's he's straightened people out who talk too much and blah, blah, blah. Listen, you go you go and try to do that at your workplace and let me know how it goes. OK, your ass will be in jail. Your ass will be fired. There is no real world situation where this type of nonsense can be tolerated. Why? Because as Danny G pointed out from the very beginning, people sue people. And rightfully, they should. Why should I get choked out and have to deal with the ramifications of that, including the health ramifications of that, and just, just put up with it? No, I'm suing everybody. Somebody's going to have to pay for my damages on that. And that starts with the workforce, quite frankly, the workplace there. AEW, I'm sure they're going to have to pay for whatever damage that Jack Perry incurred from what CM Punk did to him. And if I'm Jack Perry, everything wrong with me, I'm putting on the list. Everything. I'm getting my money's worth out of this one. Because what the hell is going on in that company that Tony Khan allowed things to escalate to the point where CM Punk did that in front of everybody, by the way? That's the other thing. He felt so empowered. It's not like he took him to a corner. He beat the hell out of the guy in front of everybody. Yep. So so we got a we got a maniac, in my opinion, at least a guy who's acting like a maniac. I don't know what's in his Pepsi. Somebody better check that out. We got a maniac running around, roughing people up in the in the, in the company. And he's doing it because they had the audacity to listen to what management told them what they could do. That's the worst part about it. Management told you he could do something. And Punk didn't like it. And Punk says, no, you're going to do what I told you to do. And Perry said, no, I'm not. Who the hell are you? And now Punk wants to friggin' choke the guy. 
Are you kidding me? And people are defending this crap. But these are the same people that will cry bloody murder if anything happened to their kid or their loved one or what have you, right? 100%. 100%. If your loved one, your significant other, your kid comes home and says, hey, the guy at work punched me in the face and choked me out because I did what management told me I could do. How are you going to feel about that? Oh, well, hey, you know, he, that's what he's doing. He's a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know. He's a veteran of the workplace. He can, he can slap people around. He's got Sometimes the veteran has to kick people in the ass to get them in line. Yeah. This I is mean, what some of these knuckleheads are saying. I know, Duke. I mean, is there is there like a poster child for someone – is there a poster child better than uh, to not be uh, straight edge than CM Punk? I mean, if you ask me, the man needs to put a little bit of rum in that Pepsi he's drinking or, you know, find himself some type of uh, vice or whatever. Because, you know, to be on edge like that all the time, you know, to be that miserable all the time. I mean, the one thing about it, the one thing that you have heard a lot about him, and that's obviously not from everybody because we all have people that we get along with or don't get along with, whatever. But a lot of people have, you know, all come out and said what a miserable prick he is behind the scenes. You know what I mean? And you, you, you take a guy like that and then all of a sudden, you know, you make him feel empowered to the point where you even create another show on another night so that you can give this guy his own platform. Why on God's green earth? Would you do that? I mean, people say, "Oh, WWE, you know, they have SmackDown and Raw." Yeah, but you know what? They don't. They, they don't. They, they didn't do that because they, you know, because Roman Reigns needs to be away from Cody Rhodes. They do that because they have certain people on certain brands one night and on the other because it's a good way to. It's how they feel. The good way to run their business. Tony Khan had to literally create another show because he needed to keep certain groups of people away from each other. I mean, there isn't there isn't a business in the world that would do that. If I was a restaurant owner and I had employees that didn't get along, I wouldn't say, you know what, I'm going to go spend more money and open up another restaurant so I can take this bartender over there and have this bartender over there. No. It's either you all get along, you all try to work together for the good of the company, or you know what, we're going to make some changes. And that's it. And And I mean, the thing that bothers me the most about this, Duke, is – People come at me, oh, you're an AEW, you're an AEW hater. You don't, you don't like them. That's such crap. Because when this company came out in 2019, I was very excited. I've always been a big Cody Rhodes fan. I enjoyed this. I was excited for this. I wanted to see it. I like a lot of the wrestlers that are there. What I don't like is the guy that funded it. Because what he did was instead of being in the background, he put himself in the forefront. He decided that he was going to start booking all of the shows, which truthfully, again, another restaurant, in for, another restaurant. I would never take somebody who has never run a kitchen as a chef and just put them in a restaurant because they like to cook. Okay. Tony Khan booking wrestling matches is no different than you, than me, than Rob the Genius, than our buddy EJ or anybody else on Twitter. Okay. Because why? We're all fans. We're all fans, and we all would want to book what we like, okay? That's not how the business runs. That's not how any business runs. You book what's going to make the business money and what's going to make the business work. And in this case, what's going to try to bring in new viewers. And that's what they tried. They, to the point where, to keep people away from each other, he put his top star on Saturday nights. That lasted how long? Three months? If three months, 10 weeks, and now that's all gone because he couldn't just get people to work together because he is a horrible leader, which in turn makes him a horrible businessman. I mean, I I don't disagree with anything you just said, and and it's interesting because for you to put that much into one wrestler, that is scary. Because here's a reality situation. The the company existed before Punk, and now it's existing after Punk. What is Tony Khan doing, and what has he done to build stars? And the answer to that question is absolutely nothing. His biggest claim to fame in terms of a star that he can say AEW built at this point is Orange Cassidy. 
And Orange Cassidy is not over. He's over in AEW. He's gone viral a couple times with some of his acrobatics. But overall, it's not like people are walking around saying Orange Cassidy's name in random households in your neighborhood. No one knows who the hell this guy is. And it's not from a lack of trying on his part. So let me make sure I'm clear on that. I think Orange Cassidy has done everything he could possibly do to make his character mean something to someone. I think the problem is Orange Cassidy should have never been put in that position in the first place. Tony Khan, you had Will Hobbs, you have Keith Lee, you have Swerve, you had Scorpio Sky, who's now injured every two seconds. You had all these black wrestlers who who absolutely could have been pushed to be top contenders for the world championship. And you're over here putting all your marbles in an orange Cassidy. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Andrade. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. the hell is happening with Andrade? He should be in the upper part of the card. The guy has never he's never moved up in the card since he's been in that company. You notice that? No, nope. the guy's the nowhere. He's only going down. He's only going down. He's only gone down. <laughs> he's only going down. No, no, I mean, and I, I guess that's that's what we're getting at here, Duke. Because I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. I, I, I can't stand Orange Cassidy, and but. I can't stand the Orange Cassidy character. The, the the guy can actually he can wrestle in the ring. He he can. He's a he's a very 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 talented wrestler, and he has done everything he can to make the gimmick to make the character work. The problem is the character is not supposed to knock out Will Hobbs with one punch. Okay, he's not supposed to do that. Um, and for some reason, Tony elevates this guy to the top of the car. I think he's wrestled more weekly than probably anybody in the entire company and in some way shape or form he's been involved with more storylines than than the than the entire company but what tony is also guilty of is we talked about this the other day offline as well is you know he just gives up on things so quickly i mean it wasn't that long ago ricky starks gave that absolute fire promo with with mjf that was awesome like that was uh, to me, I was like, if this goes somewhere and they do something with Ricky Starks, this might get me to tune in on a weekly basis. Okay? That lasted one week. One freaking week. And it was gone. And what's not being said in this whole situation right now is who I truly feel bad for right now is Ricky Starks because he was supposed to have some type of, a, uh, a, I guess, a program. He was having a program with CM Punk. But at the same time, why wasn't that done at All In? Why? Because Punk wanted to wrestle his buddy Samoa Joe on TV. That's why. And Ricky Starks wasn't even on the card for All In. And I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but I think you understand what my point is, is Tony Khan books who he wants and who he thinks is going to be good. And he doesn't focus on the people in the company that may be able to actually bring eyes onto the product. I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to see John Moxley, John Moxley anymore with things sticking out of his head. I, I really don't. You know, I actually would like to see a guy like Keith Lee or Will Hobbs, you know, maybe get a shot at something with the title. But that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen because he's got his buddy MJF out there, you know, running his mouth every week, who he seems to think that is going to you know, bring him in people or his, his, his little stick of being this, you know, off color, I'm going to say what I want and don't care, blah, 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 works, which it doesn't. And MJF has backed himself into a hole for that because he would never be allowed to bring that character that he's known for into a company like WWE because talk about an HR nightmare. So he just doesn't get it and he doesn't understand any type of long-term storytelling and honestly, if I would right now, I know I said Hobbs, maybe Keith Lee, get a shot with the belt. I would put all my eggs in a basket in Ricky Stocks right now. That's the guy that I would go with. But he lost to Brian Danielson last night on a strap match. So, you know, again, Ricky Stocks, he's been in a couple of decent matches, hasn't won one of them. He'll be buried starting next week now, too. Well, and that's the worst part. I mean, Ricky Stocks is supposed to main event that pay per view. With Punk. Punk screws everything up, and then you take Ricky out of the pay, out of the, the main event. Why would you do that? So 
here we go again. <laughs> and replace it with Moxley and Orange Cassidy. Yeah, it's crazy. And what listen, some people are saying that was that that match was so amazing. Give me a break. No, nope. but Ricky Starks is a great example of a guy that could not do more than what he's doing, and he still gets jerked around. No, I, and I I have my theory on that too. If you, if you haven't noticed, ever since that picture came up where he was at WrestleMania with Cody, I think I think that has something to do with it. You know, well, I, I definitely the, do that. You know, which is stupid. I think I think that's Tony Khan being like, you know, you're not you're not going to be buddies with the guy that that abandoned me. So, well, it's the sum of all parts because Ricky Starks is also black. Yep. So, so here we go again. And I know some people are, no, that's not the reason. There's no pro. Listen, why isn't the guy competing for the world championship? He shouldn't have been chasing Punk to begin with. And if you've already beaten Punk with him, why is he still playing with Punk? Yep. Why wasn't he on your biggest pay per view of the year? Uh, the biggest pay per view in the history of your company. Yep. They yep. treated Ricky Starks. Like he's a nothing. They did. Like he's a nobody. They, they did. I mean, w- w- you know, think think of it this way. This is how I look at it. Okay, he had his match with MJF and he lost. Th- you know what? Okay, that's fine. You you want to do it that way? That's fine. But build up a feud. Build up a story. You know, have something happen. Give him a rematch. You know what I mean? Even if you have MJF come out and say, you know what, I want to go with you one more time because I want to prove I can beat you, and stuff like that. You know, I mean, and not to bring in the company comparison, but I'm going to look at what happened Saturday night at Payback with Seth Rollins and Nakamura, right? Nakamura lost clean. He lost clean. But they continued the story after the match with a beatdown and made Nakamura actually look stronger after the match by taking advantage of the fact that Seth Rollins was hurt to develop a long-term story. So that'll probably go a couple more matches now. And Seth Rollins will win every one of them. They're not going to put the belt on Nakamura. But it put Shinsuke Nakamura in a position where he looks strong. And then after this feud is done, whoever competes against him will have a chance to get elevated as well. That's what Tony Khan doesn't understand. You're absolutely right. And and he's not going to understand it because... He is not someone who has put enough of a value on utilizing mentors who have actually done this stuff before. Why did you hire all of these veterans to be in that company? Jim Ross, Dean Malenko, Tony Schiavone, uh, Arn Anderson, Jake the Snake Roberts. You got all these guys who have handled creative on a large scale for the better part of the past 50 years. These guys have been involved in creative and managing talent and, and recruiting and, and, and all that good stuff for the better part of the past 50 years when you look at all the experience that I just named there. And yet Tony Khan has the audacity to say, if anything goes wrong with me, I want Brian Danielson to run the company. What? Yeah. yeah and you, 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 you know what? You said this to me numerous times. These... Actually, I'm going to put it into it. These guys, they don't have a job that works for Tony Khan. They have they have somewhere they have to be once a week. They do what they're asked to do, and they go home. That's not really a job. And they're getting paid a ton of money to do this. You know, they they focus more on the out of work opportunities than they actually do the in work opportunities. And again, he says that about Daniel Bryan. Why? Because he wants to be his buddy, but. Even like last night, did you did you see what Brian Danielson said at the media scrum like last night? Like he's not committing to anything long term because he said his daughter keeps saying to him, when I'm seven years old, you're going to be home every day, right, dad? So he's not even committing to anything long term. He's just he's just there to get make money. He's there to make money. And that's it. He's there to make money and he doesn't have to work that much. And he can he can do his own thing. He can do comic cons. He can do conventions. He can, you know, maybe make an appearance on a TV show or something or whatever. Or he can just go work in his garden all the time if that's what he wants to do. You know, and I guess in a sense, we'd all want that. You know, who wouldn't want to work one day a week and make $3 million a year? I, I'll tell you what, it's pretty damn good if you ask me. But I just don't think in that industry it works that way. You know, I mean, professional football players, they don't just get to, you know what I mean? You don't just get to come in, show up for 16 weeks and go home. It's a year-round job. 
And professional wrestling is if I'm, it's it's just as enduring, if not even more, than professional football. These guys put their bodies on the line like you wouldn't believe, but you don't get better at it by working once a week. And now, again, a guy like Daniel Bryan, he can get away with that because he's been doing it for so long. You know, a guy like John Moxley, yeah, he's been he's been in the business a while. They can get away with it. Maybe they get some special treatment or whatever. But those aren't the guys that are the issues in AEW. It's it's the undercard. And, you know, I mean, for God's sake, there's an entire Twitter handle that puts things out on a weekly basis of mistakes and botches that are caught on camera every single week. You know, and it's just we know they exist in WWE, too, but they're just not nearly as, as prevalent as they are in AEW. It's just it's it's just one big toy for a billionaire, and it shows on TV. And I know I'm an AEW hater, like everyone likes to say, but you know what? It's been four years now. It's been four years now. You have no, you have one year technically left on your TV contract, which is an option that hasn't been picked up yet. You're negotiating with one company that we know of for a new contract. It's time to start taking business a little bit more seriously if you want to be taken seriously. Danny, do you believe AEW is now a safe work environment now that CM Punk, Phil Brooks has been removed from the company? Do, do you feel that it's safe now? Was, was he the, the unsafe factor in that company and now all has been corrected? No, no. He was part of it, definitely. But like I, like I started this program with, I'm going to say it now, there are still people there that are bullies. Now, maybe they're not the type of outspoken bullies that Punk is, but the Young Bucks are bullies. Kenny Omega is a bully. Hangman Page is a bully because Chris Jericho is a bully because they're using their, uh, their real status or their actual employee status with AEW to get what they want. And by doing that, they're holding other people back. So if you ask me, they're bullies. They're not allowing some of these other guys to, to, to get better, to, to, to get better. And even some of the guys that I think want to do good by the company, they're not taking them seriously. I mean, I can't stand Dax Harwood. You know that. But I think at least Dax Harwood cares. And I think he wants to see the company do well and he wants to do other things. But they, yeah, big deal. He gets to be a tag team wrestler and they get to be the tag team champions again because they threatened to leave the company. So Tony put the belts on them to make them happy. But you know what that does? Then that goes up the ass of the other guys who are the executives, who don't like that, who don't want to do that, who love to troll. I mean, you saw the thing, you know, you know, who knows what this was, but you know, you saw the thing on Twitter of the Young Bucks doing a victory lap the other night in Chicago in front of 3,000 people. You know, it's, it's, yeah, maybe they're not physically bullying or they're not whatever, but they're, they're holding people back. And in turn, what they're doing is they're holding these people back so they can keep themselves prevalent on the card. And to me, that's bullying. To me, that's a type, it's a form of bullying. It's a form of a way of holding people back and hurting other people for their own advancement. And if you ask me, of all of them, Chris Jericho is the one in particular that should be stepping aside because he looks worse and worse and worse every single time he picks up a microphone or steps in the ring, if you ask me. As always, Danny G, you bring the heat. I love it. This is a great uh, perspective on this issue because, you know, everyone's going to try to talk like they're wrestling experts and other people are going to try to add in some other stuff like they're, uh, they're some insider, what have you. But you and I had a discussion from a, a perspective of being managers, uh, of people who understand business. And I think that this is a refreshing conversation in perspective that I think other people listening They'll be able to be armed with this so that when they're looking at a situation like this and others, they, they have a, a, a new perspective to view it from. So kudos to you on that, man. What's the best way everyone keep up with you, Danny G? Well, you know, uh, I got my Twitter handle of Wicked Smart, <clears throat> which, you know, clearly I'm not. It's obviously a joke if you've ever been from if you're not from the New England area and you're listening to this. Um, wicked is just one of those words. It's basically a Boston, Massachusetts type thing. Uh, even though I live in Rhode Island, but you know, I don't know, close enough. But um, that's about the best way to get me. You can catch me on Instagram too if you feel like it. Uh, Daniel F and Garvin. Uh, I mostly just post pictures of food that I cook and you know my beautiful wife and kids and etc. And I mean, other than that, you know, I'm I'm here and. 
look, I, I get into conversations with people all the time with, with AEW fans. I've never blocked one of them for calling me a name, although they always get to the, they always take it, they always make it personal as opposed to just trying to realize that you're trying to have an adult wrestling conversation, but it is what it is. Um, I have a lot of fun in the Duke Love Wrestling uh, group that we're on on Facebook. Uh, you know that, Duke. <laughs> we have a blast on that. So that's about it. Uh, other than that, you know, thank you again for having me on. As always, Duke, it was, uh, it's always a pleasure talking. I mean, you know, people, people may not realize, you know, we talk every day, just, uh, just not always recording. So it's always fun to come back on with you. Let's talk hydration. See, I carry something to drink with me every single place that I go because I am concerned about being dehydrated. It runs in the family. Everything from dry mouth, dizzy spells, fainting, it's pretty serious. And I've tried all the different types of waters and sports drinks. Let me tell you something right now. Liquid IV. That has been the most efficient at keeping me hydrated and doing so pretty quickly. Okay, Liquid IV has five essential vitamins and is two times faster at keeping you hydrated than water alone. And I'm serious, man. Everything from vitamin C to vitamins B3, B5, B6, B12... Liquid IV also is non-GMO, so it's free from gluten, dairy, soy. So for all you folks out there with food allergies, this may be right up your alley. And I know what you're thinking, but how does it taste, Duke? Well, it tastes pretty good. Okay, we're talking my favorite in pina colada. They also have tropical punch, strawberry, new flavors like sea berry and strawberry lemonade. Huh, you can enjoy this stuff, man. But don't take my word for it. I want you to stop what you're doing right now and head over to liquidiv.com. Use the promo code Duke Loves Wrestling so you get 20% off your entire order. I mean, anything that you order on liquidiv.com. So what are you waiting for? It's time for you to shop better hydration today. Use the promo code Duke Loves Wrestling over at liquidiv.com. Save yourself 20%. Stay hydrated. Most importantly, enjoy life. That's right. This is Tony Schiavone, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling. 